It was around 1 a.m. on October 1st, 2016 at this condo in Macomb Township. Police say Ebony is heard telling her husband, Hal Byram, to leave. No, I want you to leave. No, no you won't leave. I'm not leaving. Yeah, you need to leave. No, I'm not. Because I have a child here. On the call, she explains to the dispatcher why she wants her husband gone. We have had a dispute. He wanted to get all his stuff and leave in the middle of the night. He can do this another time. In court, Byram sat listening intently as his wife requested police. On the phone, the dispatcher asks about weapons. Any weapons in the home? It is. Just seconds later, as the 911 call continues. But it's not, it, it wasn't in play, there's no threatening anything. The dispatcher is interrupted by gunfire. Ten shots are heard and then silence. 38-year-old Ebony Byram made a 911 call requesting her husband to be removed from her home. During the call, the two could be heard arguing and going back and forth with the husband refusing to leave. After answering a series of questions from the 911 dispatcher and discussing the gun that was present in the home, Ebony's husband retrieves the firearm and could be heard shooting her multiple times. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Macomb County, Michigan. Macomb is a county located in the eastern portion of the U.S. state of Michigan, bordering Lake St. Clair, and is part of northern metro Detroit. The county is known for its strong manufacturing sector, particularly in the automotive industry, which has played a vital role in its economic growth. 38-year-old Ebony Byram, a resident of Macomb County, was a mother to a 16-year-old son. She was a nurse and those who knew her described her as a vibrant, compassionate, empathetic person and said she was a delight to be around. Ebony was one of 11 siblings and was really close to her family. Ebony met 44-year-old Hal Byram, a United States postal worker. The two dated for a few months and decided to get married. The two shared a nice condo together in Macomb County, Michigan. The marriage, however, faced ongoing conflicts right from the start, primarily related to financial matters. Hal was also known for being possessive and having a short temper. Ebony's sisters described him as controlling during their relationship and said he installed cameras in their residence so he could always keep an eye on Ebony at all times. At about 1.03 in the morning on Saturday, October 1, 2016, 911 dispatchers received a call from a woman who was having a domestic situation with her husband. The caller was 38-year-old Ebony Byram, and she appeared calm while she was on the phone with 911 as she expressed her desire for her husband to leave their home. Hello? in the morning and he's and being real disrespectful. This. this is his wife. This is his wife. Okay. And I just want Please. him to go. He can go. I just okay. want him to leave, but he's not leave. Yes, but he's now leaving so his name is on the lease, which is true because he came over here and signed the lease before I did. So I just want him to leave. He can just get his stuff another day and he can just go. But right now tonight is not tonight. Okay, what's the name and of the this, complex? And this one, the argument, this is the argument that had happened tonight. What's the name of the complex that you live in? Husband's name? Kyle Biello, Byron. I'm sorry, one more your phone. I'm sorry, H-L. Okay, what's your name, ma'am? Ebony, E-D-O-N-Y. Ebony, what's your last name? It's, it's Byron for right now. It's what? It's by one B Y R O M. Okay. 
Okay, and where's he at now? He's right here, but I, you know what? This is not a good time. We mm -hmm. had an argument. He, he getting all the stuff. Like I said, I just want him to leave before it escalates. Oh, okay. Does he have any weapons on him? No, right now. No. Any weapons in the home? It is. Okay, where's the weapon at? They're in the bedroom. Is it? What is it? Okay. I, I really don't know what it is. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. it. Is it a gun or is it a knife? What is it? It, it is. It is a gun. Do you know if it's locked up? No, it's not. Okay. But it's not, it, it wasn't in play, there's no threat. After talking about the gun, a series of gunshots can be heard, and Ebony Byram never returns to the phone. Hello? 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 Ebony's 16-year-old son was in his bedroom, engaged in an online video game session with a friend, when he heard the sound of gunshots. As soon as he opened his door, he saw his mother and stepfather on the floor. Seven minutes after Ebony's 911 call, Ebony's son as well as the friend he was playing the online game with, also dialed 911. Deputies were already present at the residence when he made his 911 call. Deputies discovered Ebony dead on the floor. She had been shot multiple times. Her husband Hal was severely injured with a single gunshot wound under his chin that entered his head. Deputies found a 40 caliber handgun lying on the floor next to him, which was later discovered to be his registered firearm. Investigators determined that Hal fired 11 rounds striking his wife multiple times, then he attempted to fatally harm himself after killing his wife. Investigators suspected that the couple was arguing over finances when the fight escalated causing Ebony to dial 911, and during the call, Hal decided to go into the room and retrieve the weapon and take both of their lives. After the shooting, Hal was rushed to the hospital where he was in serious condition. Three weeks after he murdered his wife, he was arraigned in his hospital bed while he was being treated for his gunshot wound. He was charged with first-degree murder and was ordered to be held without bond. Prosecutors are calling it a failed murder suit. Combe County attorneys played a 911 call documenting the moment they say a woman was killed by her husband. The victim was calling for help when she was gunned down. Tears in court as a 911 call is played to the public. It's the last moments of Ebony Byram's life. She's heard reaching out for help. It was around 1 a.m. on October 1st, 2016 at this condo in Macomb Township. Police say Ebony is heard telling her husband, Hal Byram, to leave. No, I want you to leave. No, no you're going to leave. I'm not leaving. Yeah, you need to leave. No, I'm not. Because I have a child here. On the call, she explains to the dispatcher why she wants her husband gone. We had had a dispute. He wanted to get all his stuff and leave in the middle of the night. He can do this another time. In court, Byram sat listening intently as his wife requested police. On the phone, the dispatcher asks about weapons. Any weapons in the home? It is. Just seconds later, as the 911 call continues. But it's not... It, it wasn't in play, there was no threatening anything. The dispatcher is interrupted by gunfire. Ten shots are heard and then silence. Hello? The call brought tears to family in the courtroom. Hal Byram sat quietly showing little emotion. You hear nine shots, rapid fire, and then less than a half second, a second shot, or the tenth shot, which is he places in victim's own hand. Byram survived that injury. His wife was hit nine times. She was found dead inside the home. He is charged with first-degree premeditated murder. The judge agreed this case will continue to trial. Ebony's 16-year-old son, who witnessed the aftermath of the killings, went to stay with Ebony's sister right after the shooting. He would later go to live with his biological father, who lives out of state. Ebony's family members intend to arrange counseling services for him to provide support to help him deal with what he went through. It is reported that he had not been the same since the passing of his mother. Additionally, the dispatcher who handled Ebony Byram's 911 call was granted a few days off from work. Neighbors were shocked by the tragic events that occurred that day because they viewed the couple as having a loving relationship with no signs of trouble. They described Ebony as quiet and unassuming and Hal as friendly, soft-spoken and polite. The motive as to why Hal committed this horrible crime is unknown. There were no prior domestic incidents or calls to the home of the couple, and Hal Byram had no criminal history. 
On the day of his sentencing, Hal Byram failed to show up. The defendant, Hal Byram, refused to come to court for his sentencing today. That is his right. The deputies and the judge can't make him come to court, but the victim's family saw that as yet another slap in the face. Him not coming today is just another way of he just him just controlling the situation. The family of Ebony Byram has endured a very lengthy, drawn out court process, mainly because the defendant, Hal Byram, according to lawyers, has been incredibly uncooperative. He pled no contest to killing his wife, Ebony. The two were in a fight inside of their Macomb Township condo in October of 2016. He did not have to shoot her nine times. You know, and I, I, sometimes I wish every day that he had died that day with her. But I get, you know, more gratification in the fact that he's going to die a slow, painful death. Ebony's sister says a slow and painful death because Hal Byram, seen here in earlier court hearings, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The family says Byram's life sentence does help, it does bring closure, but there will always be a wound that will never heal. I know that you didn't want to show up because you know that you hurt my family, and I know that you see that you hurt my family really badly. You broke us in many ways that we'll never be able to repair. I just ask that you suffer and you understand our pain and understand what we're going through. What happened to Ebony Byram was a tragedy. You could hear the hesitation in her voice and how uncomfortable she was talking about the firearm with the 911 operator while her husband was present, as if she didn't want to remind him about the gun in the house in fear that he may decide to use it. She didn't deserve what happened to her. My condolences to her friends and family. May you continue to heal and one day find peace. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.